The earning serendipity methodology leans a great deal on references to agriculture, tilling, sowing, reaping. These are part and parcel of our ultimate goal, which is earning good fortune and a bountiful harvest from our endeavors. We've discussed broadened observation, the art of seeing with circular vision, which is critical to both earning serendipity and seeing yourself through uncertain times. Again, is there ever a time that is certain? There is so much to talk about with respect to the methodology that we can't fit it all into this brief discussion. But I'm going to touch on each of the remaining three leaves because as I explained at the beginning, they are the leaves on a shamrock. They coexist, each reinforcing the other. I'm also going to bring some of those agricultural references now because I think they provide a solid foundation for the understanding of the methodology. When we talk about seeing with circular vision, we're really talking about tilling and preparing our soil. See, any good gardener evaluates the bed in which they are going to plant, works to adjust the pH, takes the time to hoe the rocks and the weeds. When we talk about expansive innovation, we're really talking about planning our crops. It's the veteran farmer that knows that it is difficult and critical to rotate the crops among the plots, who knows that despite the uncertainties, conditions favor growth if the seed is properly sown. But those that can simply see the opportunity, who know that the soil is fertile, but do not know how to sow it, they are the dreamers. Politely, we call them visionaries or idea people. Do you all remember the text I quoted earlier, the Entrepreneur's Toolkit? They quote William Bygrave, a professor emeritus at Boston University and a specialist in the entrepreneurial arts. He was asked to define an entrepreneur, and he said that it was not only someone that perceives an opportunity, but one who creates an organization to pursue it. Now, I've already told you that I believe that entrepreneurship is much more than that, that it is a way of viewing life. But in this sense, Professor Bygrave is dead on. If you are not willing to put the effort into cultivating opportunities, you should never expect anything more than random growth. Random growth. Now, there's an old tale told in Cuba about a farmer who is known throughout the land as a, as, a, as a magician with his soil. The land prospector one day shows up at the farmer's door, marveling at the bounty the man has pulled from his plot. And he tells the farmer he wants to purchase his farm. He has inquired throughout the region, and there are none that have consistent harvest that the farmer has. And everywhere the land prospector goes, the farmer's is the name he hears. He is willing to pay enough to make the farmer rich beyond the wildest dreams and will employ the farmer to work the land until the end of his days. The farmer asks for an evening to sleep on it and when the prospector returns the next day, he politely declines. The prospector, disappointed, turns for his car and, he's and as he's leaving, he tells the farmer, what saddens me most is that now I will have to become your competitor. There is much more land near this town and it's the soil and it's, it's the same. The same is yours. It too can be farmed successfully and with far greater profits. I had only hoped to include you in my great enterprise. And the prospector took his leave. But why, a boy who witnessed the exchange asked, you could have been a rich man. The farmer considers the question for a moment and then nods, motioning towards the boy's earth-stained palms. The magic of which the man spoke is not in the soil as he thinks. It is here, in your hands and in mine. I did not accept the man's offer because he sought only to reap the harvest but knew nothing of sowing its seeds. Such man, such a man's fortune cannot be trusted. 